right, one of the things I neglected to show in the in the build video for the SJ Yoko Electric is what I'm going to do out here for unloading things from the heavy duty carts that come off out of the building on the tracks here. My initial thought was to have a crane come this way with crane rails come out over the track here and be able to, to transfer the load from you know from the cart right over put on the flat cart. But I was like, man, I'm not skilled enough and I don't have years and years to do all kinds of research. So I said, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to find a crane that I can say they put on a pedestal or on a, you know, on a, on a pad back here that can lift, move over, load rail cars, and also swing over and load trucks as well. Because let's face it, they would probably ship both ways. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I have a, initially, from a friend, I bought one of the Highway Miniatures uh, steam cranes, which I think I'm not going to use. I'm going to use that somewhere else. I have another idea for that one. But what I'm going to use is this, as I pan over. And, uh, oh, good Lord, let me change the uh, F-stop here. <laughs> so this is an Artitech US. Bucyrus RB17 crane. Uh, it's actually a kit, and I wanted it for a kit, and I'll, and I'll explain why in a moment. 87.125. They do make it ready made, ready to go, which looks gorgeous. For I don't know, it's around 80 bucks, but you might scream at that, but that's actually not a bad price for what you get. But what I wanted to do, you know, I'm not going to have it on its, on its tracked treads. I'm just going to have it on its base on the pad so it can swing that way. Now I am going to, just FYI as I swing over here. Oh, now it's dark over here. Good Lord, get your studio set up better. What studio, he says. All right, so the tracks, I'll use them as a load, you know. i got them primed right now, weather them up, and put them on a flat car. That looked pretty cool. So all the other components, uh, this is a resin kit mostly resin uh, actually it's mostly brass to be honest uh, i think about it and then you have to form all the brass parts you have to form the boom in two halves and i'm not sure i did the greatest job on that but yeah we'll see um <laughs> and then it goes together as a kit like i said i wanted it that way so i could mount this to this onto the pad and what i'm thinking of doing which may work so far it seems like it's going to be okay I did want the crane to move a little bit. So I actually, that's drying right now. I have it primed. I drilled and tapped in the bottom of it for a 256 screw, which is what this is. Now, actually, it, it works pretty good, I think. Now, this right now is just sitting here. Uh, this is the pad for it. I have a little depression cut out in the center for when that sits down there. And again, if the, if the screw drops, it's going to be, of course, I can't find the, there, boop, where that's going to go. And then I can thread it onto there. And it's, it's nice and snug, but not so snug that I can't at least swivel the crane a little bit. So I'm going to try it that way. If it doesn't work, and I do not claim to be a machinist, it seemed to tap okay. And then the threads are actually there. Um, I wasn't sure if the, if the resin would tap okay. But as part of the kit, this is actually kind of a support that the cab assembly came on. So I tried it first on the bottom of this. I figured I'm going to ruin some. Let me ruin this. Oh, and by the way, this kit, these two, look at these two things. This, hey, let's go off on a wild tangent. These are part of the kit. I'm going to save these. I don't know what they're going to be, but they're something. They're pretty cool. You know, prime them up, sand them a little bit, maybe fill in some of the ends. Because, again, they're obviously just support pieces for the main kit components. But they look like they could be something. I don't know, counterweights or... Put them on a flat car and weather them. I don't know. They're just too cool to throw away. So <laughs> more to come on whatever I decided to do with these little guys. But that's pretty cool. All right, anyway, I don't know where that came from. So this is the new pad. It's roughly 3 inches by 3 inches or kind of 22 feet by 22 feet. And I have it spaced back, hopefully enough that the boom will be kind of at the right height to lift things. I have to worry about that because i, I got to be real careful because I'm getting... As I mentioned in the, the main video on the building, part two, I guess this is a part 2.25, I don't know. You know, I'm getting this building longer and longer, 
And now I'm adding three more inches to it for this. So I got to be careful how it's going to fit. But anyway, now I didn't do a real good job, like I said, in the video on this because I just kind of sat down and started working on it. But it, I just kind of followed the instructions. It's a little tedious. I had to really do some looking to understand how things fold. I don't claim to have the greatest spatial understanding sometimes. So what I did do was, you know, kind of look at it and figure out how things go. But pretty much you have to fold all the little brass pieces. You have to make the two halves of the boom. I'm sorry, this is the second sheet. Let's start here at the beginning, shall we? Gives you a little diagram of all the the brass pieces. Again, the resin pieces are mostly the cab. Uh, the cab, the cab support, the treads, and everything else is pretty much brass. That you then do various folds to and and whatnot. And I, I don't claim to be an expert building this kind of kit, so I had to figure out well, how far can I build it before I need to you know paint it? Because once it goes together, you don't want to be spray painting it because the boom is different color than the cab, which is different color than this and that. And, uh, okay, I'm hoping I figure it out. But I've got the boom, like I said, the boom's all together. I have most of the parts, I think, formed properly. Again, you get things painted and weathered. It's kind of hard to tell that you might have messed things up. So I'm pretty far along. Um, the boom does kind of hinge into the bottom there. Oh, now you can't see anything. So like I said, that's, uh, that's together. I have that painted with a uh, German field gray. I took them out and sprayed them. I think it'll be a lot easier. This is just primered. That's with the Vallejo gray primer. That's painted. Their pans are gray, as is that, which that goes inside here for the back of the boom. This is allegedly painted a Humbrol number 82, which I just happen to have. It's kind of a cool orangey color. They call it orange lining, which I don't know. Okay, anyway, I have the color. Whether I'll use it or not, I'm not sure, but I do like the way it looks. I'll, I'll throw some photographs up of how the crane's supposed to look. I'm not sure I'm going to have it look that good, but anyway. So I just want to show this. I have some of the crane components over here. You know, I, I primed them as well. I actually sprayed them the German field gray because that looks kind of a, like a cool color for it. Anyway, so <clears throat> yeah, this won't be a build video. It's just, you know, you have to take your time and follow the instructions and for me it was a little bit tedious but that's just because i'm not all that smart but we'll see how it looks we'll get this together and uh like i said this will probably be <laughs> for me the industry sj yokel uh part 2.25 <laughs> or part 2a or part 2 small letter i i don't know anyway all right let me fiddle around with this and see what i can do all right so here's my thought process on this little crane edition and I'm thinking way too much about it like <laughs> I'm being one of those model editors that's over complicating things but anyway I want to get this moved along and get it done so this is the kit I took the base of the kit mounted it to another little pad I'll pull it off and show you um, this is just kind of to show my failure on the painting I, I, I probably should have airbrushed it full disclosure I didn't I tried to brush paint again that, that's the right color that's the humble number 82 that I had and what it probably should have done to brush it I, I believe I've seen it before when you paint resin stuff maybe other things with the humble and you open these after a while they get that real nice kind of gooey uh, pigment that sells at the bottom I think you're supposed to dip into that and paint I stirred it all up it was a little bit thin it didn't cover very well this is the second coat on it, but you know what? It's okay. I'm not going to put a third coat. I don't, I don't want to start covering up details. But what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to take it out, and I'm going to hit it with some of Vallejo Hobby Spray, because I do want to get the, I'll show you. I mean, that's the boom. It's been painted with uh, Vallejo, uh, the German Panzer Gray, which looks good. It's kind of a greenish gray color. It looks kind of cool. And the color they call for, the Humbrol paint, is actually a greenish color. So that looks pretty cool. So right now you can see I have my canopy glue, which you probably didn't notice, or probably didn't know, also is very useful as a boom support. So, because <laughs> I don't have that tied in yet. 
So I'll take the boom off. If I can do this here. Let's kind of pull it out of there. It's just sitting there. All right. Thank you, Mr. Formula 560, for your support. I'll cut your purchase order for your services. All right. So here's the crane. What I did, you can see, I actually threaded through that bottom styrene piece. And I, like I said, I drilled and tapped into the base. So that way, when I super glue this to the concrete pad, I kind of just make it a little bit brighter here. See, this way, you know, this will swivel. It, it will. I have it threaded in. You probably can see I drilled it and tapped it a little bit too far, but I did want it to kind of come through there. See that that screw? It's a 256 screw. is barely sticking through there. Now, when I paint it, and the way it's going to sit on the layout, you probably will never notice that. So I'm okay with that. But I wanted to have a little bit of thread come through there. And I don't, again, this is not meant to be a, I know threading into resin may not be the smartest thing to do. But it's not going to be moved, moved all the time. I just wanted it available to be moved. I guess I want to reposition it at some point in time. Which when that's glued down, it, it will move. And I might have a railing that I bought, or have painted up a set in there. I think I'm going to use that. That's a painted up, that's another Artitech. I think it's a, they call it a signal box or a switching box, something like that. It's from the, um, I think the uh, Railways of the Netherland, I think. But it looked cool. It's just a nice little cabinet. Looks like they're going to hang some chain there off the side. I drilled and added an 020 little extension there to hang some chain on it. You know, it's for clevises and hooks and that kind of stuff that they might want to store out of doors so they're not laying around the pad. So I'm going to put that there and then figure out how to tie in the... Ah, and then figure out how to tie in the, the railing. So that's that, that'd be easy enough to do. So again, there's the pad painted. I did notch out a little bit for the screw. That's underneath that. And then I'll super glue that down. And then get a nice little support for it. And then that's going to sit at the end of the loading dock. So it can swing over to the track or over to, the, to load a truck. Either way. Okay, so now, like I said, let me just, um, I wonder if I can do this. If I set this down, doo -doo -doo -doo. like I said, if I hold this, just because it's a little tight, it will, it'll swing just enough. And that's all I want to be able to do. But it's actually threaded on there, so I can, I don't know if this is going to be visible, I'm not sure. But I can thread this back off again, carefully. I don't know how many times I can do this. Again, I don't want to damage the threads. They're not in steel or anything, so I don't know how well tapped resin threads hold up. I have no idea. It seems to be okay. Get that out of there. Come on, honey. No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, so there's that. So again, there's the you know, that inside part. I'm gonna spray. You know, I might just go with the. Uh, this is painted UK bronze green, which I love. That's a cool color too. <laughs> but I might go with the German camouflage gray to kind of match the boom, because it, it looks like the bottom part is painted a darker color. That way, I'll get some color on the inside here, and that'll be paint. The, the control, the little control stand goes in there. And it'll kind of weather the outside. So I think I might be able to save it. And it's just a crane. You know, it's not the Taj Mahal. Like I said, so that's been drilled and tapped underneath there. This is the model of the base. And I did add some big nut bolt washers around it there. It's threaded through. added a nut in there to help hold that down. But it's, I think the super glue probably leaked in there. It's going to help hold the screw too. So what I'll do. Make them, all right, make them back vertical here. I will super glue that down because I wanted to verify that it will thread on. Then I can get this all done, weathered, um, you know, get the railing on, get the cabinet on, and then this is ready. And then finish up this with the paint and then the boom. And it's pretty far along. Then I got to figure out how to rig the thing. Oh, good lord. The tiny little thread they give you, they do give you the thread for it. Oh, I can see that's going to be a nightmare, especially for me. All right, so I'm going to take out the cab. That's the door. Here's the other part of the cab that's got to go on, and this is, that's a folded brass piece.
but they have some acetate to go inside it. So that's going to be painted. So I'm not going to put the glass in there, acetate, glass, then try to spray paint it. That would be really nuts. All right, so we're moving along here. Let me uh, get this out. This boom looks really nice. I just like the way the, the brass looks as opposed to a plastic kit. Uh, all right, let's see if I can save this and uh, make it look presentable and then get it ready to go on the layout. Alright, time to wrap this up. So here's the um, the base, the additional pad for the crane. So I got, uh, got a railing on it and then I got the base that would have been between the treads. And then I said, okay, they brought it over here and they mounted it on this and they bolted everything down and it's nice and secure. Over here is a little cabinet for shackles and hooks and I have a little, a little extension there to hang a shackle or a D-ring or something on it, maybe some chain. Pads been weathered up a little bit. Up here I have a safety barrel because the fence, the uh, railing wouldn't come quite to the edge there so I said alright so they threw a barrel there. The skids are just laying there. I'll probably keep them loose uh, just to move around. I do have a spreader beam that I got from the Titchy. I think it's like their wreck train detail kit or something like that. It's got some spreader bars and it's just some cool stuff that I'll have probably not back on the pad unless I put them on dunnage because you have to get them with a forklift because obviously if you have a spreader bar it has to get to the crane <laughs> to the hook somehow otherwise it does no good. So this is pretty much ready to rock and roll. I'm just letting things kind of dry up here a little bit. And this will be, this will be the side that's going to be by the, the existing pad. This will be the back side. The railing I had somewhere, I don't know where I got it, somewhere, but I was thinking of using the Titchy railing. And I like the two railing better than the three for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. And they only make like, I don't know, it's like a two and a half inch segment. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead with this because it's all one piece. It's all bent. I drilled number 76 holes around very carefully. Lined everything up, set it in. Actually made it in pretty good. Which I think it looks pretty good. And uh, put a little dab of super glue on it, and it's in there. Weathered it up a little bit. Did put a wash of some dark rust on it. So that is it. The cab itself. Again, I'm gonna call that soup. It's done. It's uh, had a little bit of fun. Did some more weathering. Put some more washes on it. Uh, the this is number one on it. I don't know why. That's probably because of Cletus. And you can also see what he did here on the back side of this thing. <laughs> SJY, for, you know, for the SJ Yoko company, that was Cletus's idea. He just had to have that on there. So, so this is pretty much good to go. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to let it sit up overnight. It does have that wash on it and some some other details. I did come in and dry brush it. It's probably really hard to tell. It's really subtle, but just to kind of oh, I, a little zoomed in the point, just to kind of break the edges, a little bit of chalk white. Just kind of simulates a little, a little bit of that wear. And I'm going to stop. I'm, I don't claim to be a military model. They go crazy with all kinds of other things they would do to it. Good enough for me. So then when I get this all dried up, probably tomorrow morning, when everything sets a little bit, what I'll do is I'm going to come in, take that, thread it onto that, hopefully get it right, because I'd like it to finish up being tight like over here so I can loosen it just enough so it swings back and forth a little bit. And we'll see. Then it's a matter of getting the boom on, getting a couple other pieces that support the boom, and then getting the rigging on. Oh, that's going to be, I'm not looking forward to that at all, but uh, we'll see. All right, so there's the pad and the cab, and then tomorrow we'll get her all together. All right, here it is. More mistakes have been made, but... <laughs> So here it is, I got it mounted, uh, threaded on to the, the base piece. It's a little wobbly, I couldn't quite get the to spin as much as I wanted it to. I mean, it's a little, but it's not fine. I mean, it's fine. The uh, the screw is all the way through inside the, the cab, so it's not going to go anywhere. I was just hoping to have it a little bit more taunt, but again, I can you know kind of swing it if I want to, just for fun. That's all I want to do is be able to do that. And then I put this piece on, but I did it wrong. 
because the instructions don't really show they actually these instructions are not all that great the sides on that thing should be bent up because if you can kind of see there I kind of I kind of should have realized that I bent the end because they, they slip onto some little pins that stick off of that machinery there at the end so you can see it's twisted well that's because they want the whole damn side uh, bent up uh, I didn't realize that until I looked at some photographs I think this photograph here shows it fairly well. You can tell that, you know, this side and this side, they come flat. They're supposed to be bent up. That way, the little loop here at the end, which was laying, you know, this way, gets turned that way. Oh, well. So that's why mine looks a little bit goofy. And then, to install this bad boy, I, the instructions show it. There's a little hook on it. And they show it hooking in there on something. I, I can't see anything at all to hook it to. But I can kind of see the way, you know, this kind of looks like it comes up and goes in like that. So I have it kind of right, at least according to the pictures. Like this picture here kind of shows where it goes in there. I just put it in there. It's stuck in there. I put some super glue on it and said, good enough, I'm done. So, again, not real perfect. And I'm getting a little bit antsy because I want to get this darn thing finished. And it's getting on my nerves. So, um, unfortunately, now i got to string this thing. And I don't know how I'm going to... Again, the instructions are not very good. I mean, they kind of show you how it's supposed to run with some numbers on it. But, yeah, I can't... You know, where is it? I, I don't know. <laughs> it should have been much more clear, at least for a moron like me, to figure out. I mean, it's got little arrows and where it's supposed to go and... And numbers, but yeah, I can't follow the cables. You know, it's kind of like a Walther's instruction. Like, what am I supposed to do? Anyway, I'll do something. I may not do it exactly. Probably the instructions, well, I probably won't. And I have the photographs to kind of try to help figure out. But, the you know, the cabling is so small in the pictures, I can't figure out where it goes. I might just slap something on there and call it done. You know, very few people are going to know. Uh, one of my friends is a, is a crane expert. He'll probably know. But other than that, you know, people will come in and look, oh, look, a nice crane, and, and move on. So that won't be a big deal. So, all right. Let me attempt to uh, not lose my mind and uh, throw the thing across the workshop <laughs> as I try to put the, the little thread they give me onto this thing to make it look a little bit more acceptable. Then I'm, then I'm just going to call it done. You know what? i got to get moving here, so I'll play with it for a little while. Call it good enough and then move on. All right, I'm done. I, I didn't go crazy. I didn't throw it across the workbench, obviously. I mean, what I did was I started off... Now, oh, this thread is like a freaking human hair. I think it's somewhat close. It's not quite right, but I tied it off here in the back, put a dab of super glue, ran it up, ran it through up here, super glued it, keeping it all nice and taut. Brought it down, ran it the way I think it does, back up, around. And every time I kind of change direction, I would kind of put a little dab of super glue to kind of hold it tight. And then I came around, came down, actually fit it down through the bottom here. See it coming up through here, through there. I don't know how they finished it. I just kind of wrapped it around, super glued it, cut it off. Peace, victory, I'm done. It's fine. I don't know how well it shows up against the white background there, but... I think it looks okay. Again, a crane expert would know. Most normal human beings will not know. So I'm, I'm fine with it. So now it's time to get it ready to go on the layout. Let me just uh, try to do this quickly here with one hand. I know I'm supposed to use a tripod, but you know what? You make your videos. You do it your way. I'm just not going to go crazy here. I'm just going to take this. And this little bad boy drone over here, and it's gonna get dark for a moment. I know that, but so this is gonna sit at the end of the exactly where I'm not totally sure yet. Gonna get a little bit of light on it. Again, this is not the girl. And I can see I need to do some cleanup up top. So that's where it's gonna sit at the end. The intention being, you know, they roll the heavier stuff out. They can lift it mostly to go on flat cars. But also it'll reach over to the other side to load a truck. So that's that. 
calling it done. I'll probably do a little bit of paint just to cover up some of the shininess from the <laughs> somewhat little <laughs> excessive super glue I used to hold the thread in. So that's it. That's the crane. I hope it's somewhat realistic. I kind of like it. Again, I don't think I had the skills to put a crane here coming off the end, which I think would have looked cool as well. But I kind of like that look. Again, maybe it's an old military one that they got. You know, why they labeled it, I don't know. Cletus has had to play with it and put some initials on it and put a number on it just for fun. So, all right. That's it. Now, it's really time to get this thing over on the layout. Get it installed and then do the final detailing of the pad and everything like that. So, all right. More to come. That'll be in a future update.